What's up, everybody? Um, just recently had an issue where with my Yamaha HS8 speaker, so I figured I'd go over the resolution because the, it took me a long time to figure it out, and I figured I'd put this out here so <laughs> anybody else that has the speakers doesn't necessarily have to bang their head over this because the, the Yamahas are fairly popular. Uh, kind of budget-friendly studio monitor, so. Um, basically, what I was dealing with was uh, some a dial-up type sound, and I have a little sound clip so you guys can hear it for reference. So, uh, just to go over some of the stuff I went through, uh, I used ferrite beads to try to get rid of the noise. I used uh, IFI's GND Defender. I tried Morley's Hum Eliminator. Uh, the first electrician came in and redid all the outlets and the wiring and the outlets. Checked the breaker panels, checked the grounds, checked the neutrals. Um, we ended up redoing the plugs with the first electrician and it still didn't fix it. Didn't even really reduce it. So then we had our power company come out and check it out and they were, they said everything coming in is at perfect levels, the neutrals where it's supposed to be everything. Um, so then we tried a second set of electricians uh, and they didn't really have anything to add. They were pretty stumped by it too. Um, let's see, what else did we try? Tried new cables on each one, tried unplugging all source cables, tried unplugging all the USB devices, all the power cables, and then one by one plugging them in. Tried different runs with the cables to make sure there was no interference and just could not get anything. And then, um, one day we tried, uh, tinfoil. So as you can see, it didn't even particularly wrapped the tinfoil all that tight and uh, like it, it was a huge difference from the listening position the uh, the dial-up sound was barely perceptible uh, and by this point in time I'd spent a couple weeks uh, after my main job trying to you know figure this out and couldn't do it and uh, so then it kind of it gave me a little direction. I knew at that point it was some kind of RFI or EMI issue. And um, so in the meantime, I had some sound effects to work on that I had to work around. So I just kind of kept them wrapped in tinfoil, but then started kind of trying to get an idea on what to do next. Um, so then I bought an AM FM shortwave radio to try and pinpoint the sound. And uh, this is what I came up with. <laughs> All the time for it. So, we have a closet. There it goes already. Starts coming back. goes away, starts to come back, yeah, yeah, and so no sooner had I really seen that, um, you know, I drove up the hill and it's like, boom, right there. Um, I didn't even really think about that as a potential for it. So then I tried some other things after that because, you know, tinfoil is not all that great to look at. And uh, so I looked at some aluminum screen mesh um, that they use, like, on the front porches. Excuse me. And um, I kind of put it on the wall, and that was – it was effective, just not as good as the tinfoil. And then – 
I looked into RFI blocking paint. The issue with the paint is that once it's there, you can't get rid of it without getting rid of the drywall. Like obviously you can paint over it, but it, it's not gonna stop blocking unless the drywall or something else is used to take it off. And then I bought some RFI blocking fabric, which I ended up keeping. And then another alternative was just to see if another set of speakers could do it. Um, so I ended up replacing my HS8s with the Atom Audio A7Vs and um, no issues whatsoever, not a peep out of it. Um, and you kind of would guess if you were going to hear it in any, it might be theirs because of the, uh, the XART tweeter on them. So uh, just kind of walking back through that, I was trying to figure out why the Yamahas were an issue in the first place. And right there on the back of it, you can see uh, that's the heat sink, uh, the big black set of you know, like rods or whatever on the back of it. And I'm not an engineer, but if I had to guess, I'd say that that acted like an antenna. It's part of the reason why one speaker was worse than the other when it came to RFI. And the one that was worse was the one that was pointing in the direction of the uh, cell phone tower. So, uh, and it explains why upgrading or changing speakers also worked because the atoms at least don't have the heat sink protruding from the back like that. So, and if you're also considering tin foil lining the inside, it's it's kind of an option, but you also avoid the warranty on the speakers, which is I don't think ever really a good idea. So, but I just figured I'd put this out here so nobody else has to go through the the pain of throwing money at. <laughs> A problem and not being able to fix it and um, I wouldn't say it's an issue with the Yamaha's so much as it is just a design limitation so um, if you ever end up buying them and then suddenly you have RFI issues then you know you've already uh, uh, like you're near something that might be generating like a cell phone tower or a radio station and another thing for consideration um, I kept the ferrite beads on everything because my guess was um, if I'm getting RFI wirelessly through the speakers, it's probably leaking into the cables too. So it's running through some of the wiring anyway. So I left the beads on just to help kind of clean up any of the, the transmission that might be going through my system as a whole. So hope that helped you. Um, and <laughs> save all of anybody that needs to hear it the, the time. The Yamahas are great. I probably wouldn't have changed if I didn't have to, but since I moved into this new space, I, I kind of had to because of the RFI issue. So, all right. See you.